Namaste everyone. Welcome to the Charvak Podcast. This is your host Kushal Mehra. All right. Just the customary sound check for the live stream. Let me see. Everything going well. Yet yeah, seems all good. I have now put my headphone aside. I, I apologize. I don't do these things uh, pre-recorded. I, I tend to do them live because I like the experience of the live stream. It puts me under pressure. So I kind of enjoy it. But uh, as always, uh, today's monologue will start in a few minutes. But before that, we have a few things to take care of. As you know, this podcast is run by its members only. So before I start my monologue, I want to start by thanking each and every member in the last couple of weeks or so. So, so we'll start with Fanmo, Parasrana, Jalaj Nath Singh, Nilesh Varade, very American rat snake, okay, uh, Lil Baman. B-A-M-A-N, little underscore. Oh, okay. This is on Fanmo. So thank you very much for your support over there. Um, now we come to YouTube. So you have Vasuki Venkatesh, Anu Paswal, Mace Ways, Subodh Ghurpade, Apurva Sahasrabudhe, I'm assuming, because YouTube doesn't display the entire name. Um, Rakesh Reddy, Raj Pabnani, Vishesh Bithu, Harsh Gupta, Rajendra Kumar, Shashi, Shivaram, Prakash Jaswal, Surya Teja, Mandar Ranade, Krishna Mohan, Nirmal Rajput, Abhijit Kamat, Jay Kumar Khot, and that's for YouTube. And now let's go to Patreon. In Patreon, Mohit Baraskar, Parth Bhavsar, Rohit Kumar. Thank you very much for your support. As you know, this podcast strictly runs on members and their support only. And uh, it there is a reason why I am the way I am is because I tend to experiment with subjects i tend to do subjects that maybe mo more often than not don't get a lot of clicks and views on youtube because these are you know technical subjects at times or research papers or stuff like that but i feel these are very important subjects and they should be discussed and that's what matters more than regular recreational outrage clickbaity stuff so i designed this podcast around a model where people can become monthly members of the podcast where they pay an amount depending on their financial capacity for which i created two tiers one is the seekers tier and one is the speak with me tier now, the Seekers tier, you get access to the entire archives of the Aryan Invasion, Aryan Migration, Out of India Hypothesis videos, which is going to culminate in a detailed discussion of the Rig Veda. As of now, we are discussing the Rig Veda. We are in Mandala 3 of the Rig Veda right now. We are following the internal chronology as set by Sri Kantaragiri. We have already covered Mandala 6. Now, we are uh, doing Mandala 3. Now, if you want to access that, you can go on any of the three platforms, YouTube, Patreon, or Fanmo. Just become a member of the Seekers tier and you will get access to everything in that archive. I think more than, whew, I think more than 300, 400 hours of content is already there. You can just go and access it. If you want to support it even more, then you can become a member of the Speak With Me tier. So for the Speak With Me tier, you get access to everything that is there in seekers plus you get a monthly ama where i have these zoom sessions with the members where they basically get an hour and a half with me they can ask whatever questions they want and none of the sessions are recorded so once the session is done it's done and nothing is recorded and uh, they they are free to ask me anything the members don't have to show their photo faces to me either in fact i'm though even i don't show my face in those sessions so these are just audio chats and we chat with each other and that that's about it along with that the speak with me tier also gets access to another set of content which is called the understanding and experiencing religion content we have already covered the entire valmiki ramayana chapter by chapter verse by verse 
right now we are covering the manusmriti uh, this series was designed to take a deep dive into indian scriptures and indian texts and we just look at it from our lens and we talk about it we discuss it so if you want you can access that if you want to buy the merchandise you can go to either kadak mars or you can go to kushalmara.com and click on the shop tab over there and you can buy the merchandise over there some of you like to send the donations even today through upi so you can send it to kushal mehra at icici and if you cannot do any of this even your mere process of you know liking this video subscribing to the channel leaving a comments in the comment section if you are viewing this on youtube or if you are going to be listening to this on the audio platform whether it's spotify whether it's itunes whether it's any other leave a rating over there even the ratings help and that's about it now that i have done the promotional bit which i have to after all papi pet ka sawal hai i will get into the monologue as always the monologue is going to be not more than 20 to 30 minutes i don't like to go beyond that and then after that i just look at the comments of the live stream obviously super chat questions will be given first preference you can ask your questions either using the super chat uh, option uh, on youtube or even when you are on the live stream you can use the other option because a lot of indians don't have credit cards and they tell me all the time we want to use fanmo and we want to use upi so um so you can go on this link on the top of the screen right now it is fanmo.in/charvakpodcast uh, also for uh, the extremely price sensitive people uh, you can go on fanmo uh, i think paisa to paisa if you spend 100 rupees on youtube and 100 rupees on fanmo i think you get to uh, ask uh, more words on fanmo compared to youtube so bhaiya price sensitive logo fanmo mein question pooch lena so now let's get into the monologue now why did i call this monologue why don't you speak about this now because it's it's a very absurd uh, sort of a name and there is a reason why i decided to talk about this it's it's been now more than 6 years that i have been uh, a content creator that's all i am i consider myself to be a content creator and a commentator a commentator where i call, do commentary sometimes on subjects when i do my monologue most of the times i am a content creator where i get other commentators or experts in some cases really experts in those subjects to come on the podcast and talk about issues where i ask them questions out of inquisitiveness or i ask you know cover books now in such a scenario over the last 6 and a half years this is not something that is unique to me this is the reality of the entire content generation landscape which is in 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 the globe every single time you will come across acquisitions and uh, um you know these these accusations which basically insinuate oh kushal you did a podcast about uh, islamist atrocities in this corner of india but why don't you speak about this or the other way around if i do a podcast where i cover atrocities on dalits in india and then the natural response from another section would be oh kushal why don't you talk about this too now this is a fallacy and today i'm going to explain why this is a fallacy because it is classic what about tree uh it is a fallacy on most occasions not all occasions but on most occasions this is just a fallacy and it is a fallacy that is used by everyone including me by the way before uh, before i i try to present myself as some you know holier than thou larger than life figure who is above all these petty human emotions no i never live under the delusion or the illusion that i am above all these human emotions i am the only difference i can say is i am consciously aware of these flaws these human frailties these biases that we all have and i try to consciously get over them as a human being albeit in a flawed manner 
but at least i'm aware of it that i can assure you that i'm aware of this but this argument that every time i i do a podcast let's i'll give you an active example this is the trend of my content journey if i call let's say uh, ex muslim on my podcast and i talk about blasphemy laws in pakistan like i had a conversation with haris sultan about blasphemy laws in pakistan the next the next question was oh why don't you talk about blasphemy in india oh why don't you talk about the cow vigilantism in india that's not a counter no matter how much people want to say no matter how much people want to pretend that it's an argument it's actually not an argument because no matter what you say blasphemy in pakistan still remains a subject no matter what you say killing of non muslims remains an issue in pakistan so if i do a podcast with haris sultan who happens to be an ex muslim and we discuss issues about blasphemy in pakistan it doesn't reduce the weight of the subject per se but what is happening on the other end is this subject creates cognitive dissonance in your head you don't like to hear things about maybe pakistan and to get some sort of comfort over that cognitive dissonance you are accusing me in this case the content creator by saying oh why don't you talk about the other thing you are biased well first of all i'm not biased second of all people are entitled to talk about whatever they like for example have you ever seen a tech podcast cover politics you know there are tech only podcasts there are philosophy only podcasts they talk about philosophy have you ever seen a philosophy podcast being accused of saying why aren't you talking about this well they're not supposed to they don't do that maybe they don't want to maybe they don't have an opinion maybe they don't care similarly every time i do discussions where i talk about annihilation of jati varna every time i do discussions where i talk about the flaws of hinduism the immediate response from a certain section of what is loosely called the indian right wing or what i like to call the indian non left is oh but why don't you talk about islam but why do i have to talk about islam when i'm talking about hinduism why can't i why can't i just talk about hinduism alone is there a rule where i am supposed to talk about all religions is there something like that is there an unwritten rule if there is one who made that rule and are you the indian state that governs my life now it's a different issue that i talk about everything under the sun i talk about islam i talk about hinduism i talk about dalit atrocities i talk about islamism i talk about everything under the sun but people will talk about that at their own pace at their own time at their own speed but if a person chooses to not talk about dalit atrocities period they could be biased yes they could be biased but it's not necessary maybe they don't know enough could you give them that benefit of doubt maybe you could similarly you know there is a lot of talk about media biases nowadays you know people talk about godi media uh, a certain section of the left constantly accuses the mainstream media of being a godi media uh, a certain section of the right keeps on talking about um, the left leaning liberal bias of the mainstream media which was going on forever so the point is very simple 
you cannot be in a position where content is going to be as per a ratio. That ratio can never be fixed. That ratio can never be solid. Yes, there could be trend lines. Because of that, there are biases uh, in built in a person. It's fine. What you as a content consumer should not should be looking at is instead of demanding X from the content creator, you should look at content creators who talk about other things. Let's say if you want to, you know, find a report on Dalit atrocities, maybe you know there are certain journalists that do that. Maybe you should go and find them. Have you ever given that a thought? Or if you want to talk, uh, maybe you are a left winger who is obsessed with uh, what you like to call, what the right likes to call cow protectors or cow rakshaks or what you like to call cow vigilantes or thugs, whatever word you guys use, depending on your leaning politically. Well, there are enough journalists under the sun that cover all these subjects. But you can't flip it around and say, why don't you do this? Well, first of all, people have limitations. You know, this entire thing, uh, I, I, I remember, I constantly get reminded of a brilliant thing that was written by Samarth Bansal. And he wrote this, I think, in January 2022, where he, he talks about information the information landscape. Um, and I, I want to read Samarth. By Samarth has come on the podcast. I, I, I have a lot of admiration for Samarth. I think he's a fantastic journalist, a, a speaker. And, you know, he 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 wrote this in a point. And, and I want to share that for you all. And I think this is a very valid point Samarth makes. So he says, this is point number three of his uh, Substack uh, or his newsletter, a different way to think about Indian the Indian media. He says, why is the media not covering this is a question. And I want to read this. Uh, obviously, I'm reading this because the audio listeners don't have the benefit of the screen grab. The 95% math is complicated by another factor, the dynamics of information distribution. I have lost count of the number of people who refer to a story and say, quote, why is this not being covered by the mainstream media when, in fact, it has been? For instance, in early 2019, I received a message in a WhatsApp group linking to a New York Times story that reported the Indian government's proposed rules to give itself the power to suppress internet content, leading to comparisons with censorship in China. The young man was agitated that the Indian press ignored such a crucial piece of information and used that as an example to say the mainstream media is compromised. At the time, I was working with the Hindustan Times and I wrote the story reporting that development of our paper much earlier than the New York Times. My article, in fact, was a follow-up on a scoop by the Indian and Express. That break was all over TV channels for a few days, but it failed to reach the young man. I politely sent him a link and requested him to reconsider his assessment. This is funny and worrying at the same time. I don't know how this can be resolved, but I know it feeds mistrust. And this is the problem. Exactly this is the problem. That people... So what, what, what happens here in the example that Samarth has shared is there is a lazy person who simply did not want to go on Google or whatever search engine he or she or it wants to use, look up the verified piece of information in that particular portal and read the report by itself. The correct question this person should have asked Samarth was, has your media house covered this? And maybe in, in brackets clarified, I am not trolling you. I am just asking a question. I would love to read about it. That would have been a legitimate question. Now, Samarth could have said, I don't know, I might have to check and reply, or Samarth could have ignored it. See, when you are a public speaker, you can't reply to everyone. But the point is, this intention of people that 
every time I talk about subject X, I have to talk about subject Y, subject B, subject C, subject D, subject F, subject Z. It's just not possible. Yes, there are media biases. Nobody denies that. In fact, there are, you know, now there are great reports, great objective reports looking at um, coverage of, let's say, BBC. This was a great uh, survey done uh, in 2021. It was very interesting. They looked at it holistically. I don't know if you guys have checked it. This was done in 2021 by... You know, it was called the BBC's portrayal of India, an analysis of how international news coverage of India changed in the digital era. And and this in this particular thing, it was very interesting. Uh, I will open the research uh, now for you and I will show you how the media covers India. And uh, it was really eye opening for me because it is then that I realized that you cannot really change people beyond a point. And, and it's fine beyond a point. I've come to a point, to a place in my life where I'm like, Abhi kya kare? Abhi, I can't control everything these people, uh, you know, say or do or pretend to, uh, to care about. But it is what it is. But even this report eventually concluded that uh, the, the coverage of BBC was negative overall. And what do you do? I mean, it is what it is. I want to read the bit over here. It's a very interesting research that they did and they covered the entire gamut and it's a long range that they have covered like from the 70s to uh, this period and it's very interesting and you should read this research if you can and ask BBC these questions so so it's it's very interesting what they say what gets covered in a news broadcast is very often negative events the purpose of broadcast news is to inform the public in this process, the predominant topics featured on a news platform may likely have negative news content because this is what news consists of. The study has revealed that it was no different in the BBC's global news coverage of India. Although there was an increase in the range of Indian stories covered in the digital era, the majority of news items covered by BBC at the global level were in the categories of human and natural disasters and law and order. Notwithstanding the increased range of topics, the majority of Indian news covered by the BBC for its global audience was negative. This research supplements the earlier findings that the international representations of developing countries, in this case India, continue to be crisis reporting to a large extent. Neither the number of media personnel involved in reporting the news, the nationality of the newspaper, nor the advanced communication system has brought about a significant change in this aspect. In spite of the increase in the number of range and stories featured, the dominant topics continue to be negative in nature. This finding is reflected in other news outlets, international news coverage of India. In the news coverage by the BBC and Al Jazeera, the predominant topic was law and order. For CNN, the dominant topic was human welfare stories. But under this topic, the most featured subtopics belong to human and natural disasters. This is in line with the earlier studies which showed that the news coverage of developing countries is often negative and disparaging. In this regard, the conformity of Asian AGE, European the BBC, and American CNN international perspectives to the dominant Indian topic feature was evident except for their differences in their total number of such stories. Now you might look at this and say, see, we told you BBC is biased. I don't know. BBC is a business. It's running a business. What do your media channels on a daily basis do that is so different from the BBC? Your media channels show negativity 24-7. Your media channels obsess about outrage 24-7. Your media channel also run after clicks 24-7. So what is so unique 
and different in what the BBC is doing than what your own media houses do? Is a question you need to. I'm not defending the BBC. I have criticized the BBC, Al Jazeera, CNN, and all these portals sufficiently. But my point is, even after all of this, I don't think this is some system attack attack on us. It's just the nature of the beast. Because the editorial policy of all these portals is finally governed by the American state. And the American state likes to showcase developing countries in a disparaging way because that's the only way these people feel good about themselves. So this is not a bias in reporting. This is an editorial line. Bias would be that they will not cover negativity in their own society. I'll give you an example. Fox News consistently shows everything negative in democratic governed states in America. CNN MSNBC consistently shows negative things in Republican governed states in America. It's a consistent pattern. You can find similar studies of all these individual channels and you will see nothing unique. Before NDTV was purchased by Adani, all NDTV did was cover negative news against the BJP. Before Modi government in 2014 came into power, most media houses, if you were to do this kind of an analysis, would cover things negatively. All these things are not driven by some Machiavellian response. All these things are covered by a very simple rule that is the bottom line of a media house. I'll give you another example. So, if you look at it and see, if you start culling these, um, these news reports, so if you go into the Hindi news pantheon, where Denik Bhaskar, Denik Jagran, other, if you start cutting their report patterns out, you will see a very different kind of reportage that happens over there. And if you come into the Hindu, the Times of India, Indian Express, in the English media, you will see a completely different news reportage. That is because they have different audiences and these people sell news. Always remember, they are selling you a product. They are not doing anything else. They don't come from some mighty ethical moral space. So to accuse anyone in this scenario of biases is a waste of time. It's literally a waste of time. What I have come to realize is that the only way you can control all of this is a stop using water boundary, stop accusing people of why don't you talk about this, start using that time in looking for actual credible reports on this subject because I can assure you, I can assure you this much, that if you spend more time researching on actual reports, actual coverage, most outlets would have covered it. It's just that it did not come into the media or social media outrage cycle. This has been my personal experience over the last 12 years. In fact, as of now, as I'm writing my book and I'm looking at research matters or reports, there has not been one subject that I had to Google in any mainstream media outlet that was not covered. Whether it's related to criticism of Islam or Islamism, whether it's related to criticism of Khalistan, whether it's related to casteism in Indian society, every single report has been covered in some detail. Yes, individuals can have biases, but it does not matter. Because in the larger scheme of things of what I like to call the information landscape, these things get self-corrected automatically. If you have an op India, you have the wire. If you have the print, you have the Swarajya. And this is the nature of the beast. So stop whining whether you're on the left or whether you're on the non-left in India. 
stop asking this stupid question to content creators that why don't you speak about this because a 99% of the times you did not go through the entire content landscape of that content creator yourself so that question itself does not matter b what if that person did not want to talk about it maybe that question or that subject does not interest them at that point of time c everybody is not obliged to comment on everything especially when there is a current outrage going on maybe they don't care they don't care enough and they should be allowed to not care about everything you care about for example you like export you would want that sport to be covered more that particular person may not like that sport and may not want to talk about that sport are you going to accuse that person oh why don't you talk about this they don't it's as simple as that this is a very important point that most people forget about and then they start accusing others there are a couple of more researches that i would recommend you guys read one was the coverage of indian newspapers on muslim issues this was a uh, a research by fazia afaq this was published in january 2015 i'll share the screen grab with you these are i share links that you guys can also download otherwise main to download kar deta hu because i have uh, friends in academia who share things with me all the time but what what i try to do is share links that where you can also go and download things that's why i share these links so this is you can download this on academia.edu and this is the abstract of uh, how muslim news are covered and this was in 2015 right 2015 and and look at the uh, conclusion here too this was barely into the narendra modi government right tab tak to koi um, badi media ki pakad nahi aayi thi na so what is the conclusion as per this or out of a small sample size of the hindu and times of india the second largest constituent of the human race muslims has a lot of uh, a lot of what may be called negative image in a subject of media discourse their social economic political cultural life indeed also occupy some space in media sometimes they are positively treated as progressive but largely negative as enemies of the state both at national and global level after the events like 911 recent isis threats have tilted media elucidation of muslims in more negative tones often muslims are portrayed as terrorists anti nationals communal fundamentalists etc this kind of media reporting has the danger of building wrong perceptions about the muslims having the capability to divide the civilization into groups of conflicting interests now it also depends on the sample size you took so this person took a very selective sample size this is no way a representative of the entire media landscape it's a very selective sample size but i can tell you in the same sample size this person took you can pick a particular genre of reports and create your own narrative out of it i can guarantee you that much but i want you guys to read this it is a very interesting exercise of what people do another one was done uh, in 2021 by sangya tyagi it was called perceptions and content of traditional and online news and analysis of bias in indian media this is another very interesting survey that or a report that you should read just go through this one also they basically look at the entire media landscape or again the sample sizes and everything will be limited but i urge you guys to read this too it's uta it's it's an open research paper you can easily download it and you can read about these things it's not you know hidden from anyone but once again i'll wrap up because i've almost touched the 30 minute mark and then i'll look at your comments and then i will move on but what you need to remember is newspapers whether on youtube or any kind of content creator cannot speak about everything at a given point of time using what about to accuse them 
is a logical fallacy. If you want to accuse them, either do a systematized study like it was done of the BBC. And you clearly see that when it comes to coverage of India, they are negative. But again, you can only you know, look at this where they're, how they cover Pakistan, how they cover China, how they cover America. And then if they cover everything in a manner, then you can draw a conclusion. Now, there are studies that have actually shown that when it comes to developing world, the Western world's coverage of the developing world in general is negative. And when they cover each other, for example, a classic example was how the Western media covered the France riots, how they were very careful in covering the France riot. So last word, next time, don't accuse someone of something as stupid as why don't you talk about this? Because they are not obliged to talk about it. They will never talk about it. And you are too lazy to go and do your own research. So you expect someone to do it on your behalf. They will not do it. They are not obliged to do it. Whether it's news laundry, whether it's the wire, whether it's me or anyone for that matter. They are not obliged to do it. If you don't like that, you can go and watch something you feel good about. That's all I'm saying. I'll look at questions. Questions can be anything under the sun. And if I find something interesting, I'll answer them. If not, I will wrap up and move on. So somebody has asked, are we going to avenge the South Kashmir attacks? Uh, Obviously, we will avenge the South Kashmir attacks. Uh, the Indian state will always avenge the South Kashmir attacks. I mean, I'm not even... I'm not even... Uh, I don't even have 1% of a doubt when it comes to avenging those attacks. Uh, I mean, it's, it's quite obvious that it's going to happen. I mean, if you look at the pattern of the Indian state... Uh, it is what it is. It's it's always there. Uttank Jha, thank you for becoming a member. Uh, I appreciate your support. Now, you guys can keep on asking your super chats or your fan more questions, whatever, uh, wherever you want to ask them. In the meantime, I'll look at other, other questions and uh, I will go on the top of the of the chat and then i'll keep coming down uh, in the meantime if you have super chat questions they will be answered first and they keep popping up on my screen separately so you don't have to worry about anything mm. Mm. okay as usual no real questions okay somebody has asked fan is better than youtube or they also take 30 percent cut i don't have any particular preference i mean if you want to ask your question on fanmo you can ask it there if you want to ask your question on youtube you can ask it there i don't care either way i mean fanmo is an indian company so i mean if you want to support indian content creators and indian indian platforms you should uh, go and support them i i clearly do and i would urge all you to also so why not Okay, somebody says the thing that should be asked is do whether Hindus Hinduism deserve the amount of scrutiny they get on a regular basis and opposed to the other side if at all this much scrutiny is required or not again how do you quantify who deserves more scrutiny or who deserves less scrutiny I mean it's about the matter of interest, right? What if you have a person who has only done their PhD in one particular sect of a religion and they keep on reading everything of that sect or of that religion and they only scrutinize that, that aspect of it? What are you going to do then? Are you going to accuse them too? Maybe they don't know better, right? Keval Desai, thank you for becoming a member. Okay, somebody says Muslim uh, rate reproduction rate is much more than Hindus today. Don't you think UCC and population control bill are need of the hour? Well, the Uniform Civil Code has nothing to do with the reproduction rate of Muslims. Uh, um, 
it has i don't know what what you're saying but uh, as far as the population control bill is concerned i think it's a monumentally stupid idea again people i don't know why indians love the government interfering in their uh, in their life so much but it is what it is i think it's a monumentally stupid idea population control bill because uh, the trend global trend including the islamic world globally statistically at a larger level which includes india is that the more educated people become the more modernized the society becomes the 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 birth rate automatically falls it is the same if you look at the literacy rate comparison let's say even within the muslim community in in up and the hindu community in up and the muslim community and the hindu community in kerala it is widely clear that the kerala muslim community reproduction rates are far less than the up hindu community reproduction rate so i don't know what i mean what you need to do is just have a uniform civil code because it gives women's rights and again when women are empowered birth rates fall automatically women don't become baby making factories women realize that they are a lot more than just baby making machines so you don't need a population control bill what you need is a uniform civil code which gives women their rights women their uh, dignity and whatever happens to the global population is doesn't matter okay so anand has raised a good point here that the bbc is not a business it's a tax payer service like the dd here's the thing i think bbc is a business how it's in the business of the british state prom- promoting and propagating what it wants to promote it's a state outlet it's still a business it's in the business of geopolitics just like dd should be in the business of geopolitics it's a damn shame that dd is not used by the government of india effectively in creating international narratives like the bbc is used by their state apparatus or like the cbc is used by the canadian state apparatus in canada or like what it is called npr is used by the american state apparatus the problem with india is we are dummies we should use doordarshan to create our own state apparatus and geopolitical imagery so that's the problem i actually kind of agree with you but not in totality mm. कुशल भाई यूके का शेड्यूल बताओ वेल द यूके शेड्यूल इज नॉट फाइनलाइज टिल नाउ सो मैं बता नहीं सकता वेन एंड वेन वेयर इट इज फाइनलाइज आई विल बी टोल्ड एंड आई विल पुट इट अप ऑन सोशल मीडिया सौ बात की एक बात सबका बायस होता है बट द रियल क्वेश्चन इज डू हैव द करेज टू वेयर योर बायस ऑन योर स्लीव्स एंड हाउ रेलेवेंट और व्हाट पर्पस योर बायस सर्व्स वेल दिस इज द वन प्लेस आई हैव ऑलवेज हैड अ क्रिटिसिज्म ऑफ द लेफ्ट बिकॉज लेफ्ट स्टार्टेड दिस विनियर ऑफ न्यूट्रैलिटी आई बिलीव नो ह्यूमन आर नॉट न्यूट्रल आई बिलीव ह्यूमन स्टार्ट विद अ बायस बेस लाइन इनफैक्ट आई even did a monologue on this explaining how neutrality is a scam that the left has come up with because it did not want to uh, talk about it and you have to go and ask the left i never claim to be unbiased because uh, i am biased in many things i am biased towards uh, uh, you know spherical earth i am biased towards evolution by natural selection i am biased towards many scientific facts and i am biased against many non scientific stupid rubbish uh things that are uh, peddled everywhere thoughts on the central bank digital currency introduction in india i have no thoughts why has the left managed to manipulate mass young audiences that they are warriors of justice see i don't think so they have again where do you have the evidence for it like can you show me 
how the left has mass manipulated like if the left clearly hates narendra modi right at least you're convinced about that right so if the left has hatred for narendra modi how the hell have they not been successfully able to convince the masses to defeat him electorally in the last two lok sabhas and how even before that when the bjp was losing they clearly had affected the mass audiences so they clearly did not change anything they were doing the same thing then that they are doing it now how the hell did narendra modi manage to win in spite of that so i don't know i think these these doomsday scenarios are highly overblown i don't believe the left is so so capable i i refuse to believe in the capability of the left or the right for that matter i mean i i believe human beings are not that special i this is my opinion harsh sai deepak said that varna jati protects hindus from converting in early christian colonization and later it invents incentivize conversion is it even true i don't know what his point is i would not go by uh, a one line summation of uh, jsd's point and comment on it i i would like to see it and then maybe comment on it again do you have any particular book recommendations for anekant wat i mean you can just read the scriptures directly where they talk about it kushal i understand the media houses don't owe us anything but shouldn't there be some standards to be classified as media houses with respect to objectivity no i don't care seriously i mean are you going to force a, a media house that only covers sport to cover every single sport equally by law you really want to do that they will run into losses and they will die i mean in india clearly cricket sells more than anything so a media house will cover cricket 90% of the time and then in 10% they will do a smattering of bit of this and a bit of that it's a business model the state maybe like a dd maybe you can expect them to do that and the dd does cover all sports for example but how can you expect a private enterprise man i think these are very dangerous things very dangerous i mean i get scared what do you think is the sports policy vis a vis pak as far as i know there is no bilateral games in team sports and we play them in only international tournaments and we can't do anything about the solo ones i mean i i i honestly don't know what india's policy is about playing pakistan they 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 say we will not play bilaterals in cricket then they play bilaterals in other sports <laughs> it, it's disgusting to be to be the less we say the better it is about the indian state and this has nothing to do with the congress or bjp this has been the standard indian state line forever the indian state is pathetic the indian state is performative that's all the indian state does the indian state literally believes in performative nonsense and the indian political jamaat which is us the voters literally falls for it every damn time even if we banned every single cricket match against pakistan nobody will look at other events now if the indian state took a stand that we will not deal with pakistan period come what may that's a stand i'm willing to accept and respect but we will not do that i'll tell you why because sport is complex right there are team sports there are individual sports now in an individual sport let's say you know we refuse to share a platform with pakistan is an absolute statement that we make we will not share a pakistan wherever pakistan participates well the pakistan participates in the olympics are we not going to send our kids to the olympics are we going to stop doing that should we stop doing that because if we run in a competition where even a pakistani is running we are legitimizing pakistan well what are you going to do no we will then we'll do our googly and we will say only team sports 
then we will do our googly only cricket it this is performative nonsense personally i don't care about performative nonsense what i care about is pakistan and its terrorist state has killed our soldiers i want those soldiers to do, to get justice i would much rather see the indian state inflicting thousand times more damage to that third rated state apparatus than anything else and then smile when we play a cricket match like this he then we smile and we keep inflicting damage to that society i much rather see that i don't care about you know our, you know what our you remember the days when the same right wing used to criticize the government and say this is how far the line has changed i remember the days in the early 2014 to 18 period where the same right wing would criticize the government pakistan attacks us indian response we will not play cricket with you this is to be a running joke if you guys have forgotten now the indian state said ye joke maar rahe hain acha ye karna shuru kar dete hain now we will not play cricket now the line is like bas yahi kar rahe ho bas because the indian state knows you guys believe in performative bollocks and when you believe in performative bollocks this is all you get you get performative bollocks like listen to the statement of the sports minister right now i'll play it for you i'll play it for you and tell me what what the minister is saying over here batao mereko minister ne kya bola hai idhar kya aapne seekha hai isme jo boss minister saab ne to bol diya hai this is your minister speaking okay listen to what he says bcci ne ye bahut pehle nirne le liya tha कि बायोलेटरल मैचेस पाकिस्तान के साथ नहीं खेलेंगे जब तक वो आतंकवाद को बंद नहीं करते सीमा पार से हमले बंद नहीं करते और घुसपैठ की घटनाओं को अंजाम देना बंद नहीं करते और ये मुझे लगता है देश की भावनाएं जो आम जनमानस की भावना है उसके अनुरूप ही है Always remember the devil lies in the details. What did the minister say? Bilateral relations. What does that mean? हम ICC tournaments खेलेंगे उनके साथ. तो क्या फर्क हुआ? So tell me what did this? Tell me what did this press conference achieve? क्या उखाड़ा हमने? क्या उखाड़ा? we stated the obvious we stated what was already happening kya ukhada humne kuch nahi ukhada unko malum hai ki unko icc tournament khelna hai to unhone wapas same statement aise na kaise pakadne ki jagah aise pakad li aur bola dekha hum to nahi khel rahe are hum to ye to hum pehle se hi kar rahe the kya kuch bhi Off topic related to the podcast on urbanization of India. Do you think we will see a time where Indian takes travel? Indians take traffic rules seriously. I think we will. Uh, uh, it is. Uh, I'm actually very positive. So I'll give you an example, uh, Abhijit. Um, when the seat belt law had come, you know there was a lot of discussion about how Indians will never follow the seat belt laws, etc., etc. But they did. Most Indians wear seat belts now. There will always be people. Uh, who will uh, break the law but by and large indians wear seat belts now so i think the more you know our urban infrastructure becomes better and better and better and better and better people will become more and more law abiding naturally Okay, somebody has said, but we can't deny that left has managed to show themselves as cool and savvy. Youngsters feel more comfortable to associate themselves with left rather than right. Where is the data for that? BJP's highest voting percentage is in the young vote bank. Kis me baat kar rahe ho? Aap apne ek certain upper middle class elite tabke me baat kar rahe ho? Usme bhi you will be surprised. 
आप साउथ बॉम्बे के वोटिंग पैटर्न्स देख लो बैंड्रा वेस्ट के वोटिंग पैटर्न्स देख लो साउथ दिल्ली के वोटिंग पैटर्न्स देख लो कौन ज्यादा वोट कर रहा है बिल्डिंग्स के वोटिंग पैटर्न देख लो आप स्टेटिस्टिकल नॉर्मली इसकी बात कर रहे हो Uh, actually, somebody has asked, uh, "Have I read uh, caste as the social capital?" Yes, R. Vedyanathan's I have, and Rajiv Malhotra's Jati Varna caste I have not read. But oh, uh, the sly about I don't read locals. I actually do. I'll read a lot more than most of you do. I'm sorry to rub it in again, but most of you don't read. I read. Caste as a social capital is a book that came across a long time ago, and I got a personalized copy too, and I did read it. I always read. I have read Bal Gangadhar too. I have read Jai Sai Deepak too. Most of you who bought his book actually did not read him. So yeah, it's okay. okay i don't see any other questions best author to read actual indian history from there is not one author to read actual history from do you know how vast history is as a subject to rely on one author for history like there might be people who specialize in medieval period there might be some somebody who specializes in the classical period there might be uh, spe- someone who specializes in just the mughal era there might be someone who specializes in just the gupta period you can't read one person but if you want to uh, there are uh, you know there are rc majumdar jadunath sarkar you should even read romila thapar i i think you should read romila thapar i don't know what people uh, think but i believe you should read romila thapar and uh, there are many other historians that you should uh, read consistently all the time you can't read one person this question itself is a non starter have you read snakes in the ganga yes i even did a podcast with rajiv malhotra covering snakes in the ganga and uh, i even covered it so i'm surprised again see why you know this question stems from the basic thing i mean all you had to do was google my youtube channel and you would have seen my discussion with rajiv malhotra last year uh, around uh, october or sometime um, 2nd october or something i don't remember when exactly it happened and you would have seen uh, you know you would have seen i would have spoken do you think we need a new saffron opposition no i don't uh, i think we will get a new saffron opposition eventually uh, what will happen is that um, what india touches in my opinion the 15000 us dollar income mark it will just be that hindutva will become the sine qua non of the entire political landscape hindutva will be a given like that will be the baseline from where everything will start then the next set of fishers in indian society will come which will be about economic issues and that's when a lot of people will stop uh, liking rss and its socialist leanings now it could very well happen that rss does a complete flip and becomes capitalist from socialist because rss as a historical organization keeps changing and evolving it stand when it sees the society has changed the rss changes because it, it it is in that sense very epistemically humble organization it changes its stand immediately if somebody says no you have bad ideas for the record rss is a socialist organization on economics you don't have to believe me go read their literature they are socialists they just like to talk about some so called third way there is no so called third way they are socialists who don't like to call themselves socialists 
and now this will get me a lot of abuse from rss sympathizer i am one myself but i will call what they are they are socialists in my view after we reach the 15000 usd average income barrier we will have a fissure in hindutva politics where both sides will be hindutva but one side will be very conservative uh, fiscally and the other will be socialist and i think that will be the next break of indian politics and one more issue after we reach that level could also be about reservations and we could have that one break in indian politics where people will start saying maybe we need to go back to pre mandal days so roll back the ews roll back the obc reservations i am someone who is in that camp i believe we should go back to the pre mandal reservations which are only sc st deserve reservation nobody else actually gets a uh, has a case and then eventually in 50 years 60 years whenever the time is we should roll back sc st reservations too is my stand because eventually a society has to get out of this not stay in this in perpetual mode many atheists say charvaka is not part of hinduism what do you have to say to that very good thank you for your question i am going to be answering that in my book there will be a red, uh, a dedicated chapter in my book which will be why i am a hindu i will answer that question there so please do buy my book and thank you for giving me this opportunity to promote my book once again Mm. the rss isn't the only thing that is there why make hindus so homogenous well i never made hindus homogenous that's your assumption first of all uh the rss is the biggest representative body of hindus do you have a bigger representative body of the hindus than the rss in the pol socio political sphere not in the religious sphere rss doesn't talk about religion rss talks about socio political affairs so don't tell me baba ramdev has so many followers he doesn't i mean he talks about everything under the sun which is a weird thing but he is not a socio political organization rss in the fields of social work and they have an economic wing fii and they have the largest representation of hindus in the country so yes what they say matters you may not like that reality and you might be a personal capitalist it doesn't matter even your uh, even the party bjp that most hindus vote for right now is not a capitalist party mm will indian hate towards trudeau affect indians in canada no i think most people don't care most people just don't care all right somebody has asked when is the book launch okay honest answer i don't know as of now i have written the first draft of my first four chapters they are with someone who's rereading them looking at errors and uh, correcting a few things i've already spoken to a publisher uh, i mean the publisher honestly the talk with the publisher was not even there in my mind i had promised one particular publisher a while ago that i will give my book to them now if they say no to me is a separate issue but as of now they they are more than happy to deal with me and uh, they are very excited to you know bring me on board so you will figure it out uh, whenever uh, it happens but i i hope it happens by december the book because one thing is for sure i will be done writing the balance two chapters and the conclusion by mid october for sure uh so i don't know when then then you have the final editing process that goes with the the book publisher then they have to send it for legal um, vetting plagiarism checks stuff like that all of that i'm assuming will take at least 2 months at least and then finally once everything is done by end of december so hopefully january 2024 february 2024 the book comes out and let's see what happens of post that 
Hinduism is not a way of life. Swami Vigyanand. I agree, it's not a way of life. I mean, everybody has a way of life. A mouse has a way of life. A rat has a way of life. I mean, it's a lot more than that. It's a proper way of uh, looking at the world. It is more than that. Pawan Kalyan ke saath podcast karne ka soch hai kya? The actor turned politician. Yaar, mere ko to inke baare mein pata nahi hai. I sincerely apologize. Main itni picture nahi dekhta hoon bhaiya to mere ko kuch malum nahi hai. Which party is libertarian? No party is libertarian. My thoughts on how do you pronounce this? Vimoh? The YouTuber? Yar, Mirko ni pata, man ni dekha. Mirko, man ni dekha ni, to ma koi comment ni kar sakta. Mm. Could you talk about the writing habits you inculcated? How do you plan? completing the book and moreover balancing it with continuous reading well obviously i right now my reading has taken up a sincere beating since the last 3 months that i've been writing this book for 3 or 5 months i've been writing this book so my reading has reduced by good 60 70% uh, you just have to do it what what do i do so in that case i am prioritizing only a few things that i really want to read and I'm not doing anything else, but I my work hours have increased. So I guess if I was working eight to ten or eleven hours daily about the around the podcast, I'm right now working twelve hours, thirteen hours, like that. Like I target one one thousand, two thousand words every day. I just yeah, I'm for me it's a matter of discipline. I'm very disciplined by nature. So I end up doing uh, things that way. Okay, I don't know why you are uh, spamming my chat. You are put on a timeout. Am I back in India? No, I'll be back in October. Who do you think is the next big leader from BJP? If you mean after Narendra Modi, I'm assuming it's going to be Amit Shah. And after Amit Shah, I mean, it could be many people. I mean, looking at the age, it could be Yogi Adityanath, it could be Devendra Fadnavis, with so many other people who are there in the, you know. I don't know. I mean, there's no one person that you would say okay i think i've covered everything uh, mm. Mm. okay it seems i've covered everything Yep, I've covered everything. All right, guys. I think we'll wrap it up today. Good. My monologue. I could I I could wrap it up in 20 minutes before the scheduled time. Good for me. I get some extra time to do nothing, honestly. Which is also a luxury these days. But as always, um Please uh, keep supporting the Charvak podcast. Uh, like I said, this podcast is primarily funded through the membership program. All the members of this podcast are the reason this podcast runs. All the members of this podcast are the reason that I can do monologues like this. All the members of this podcast... Um, uh, ...are the reason I experiment with subjects... Uh, and it's fine uh, and uh, i would like to stick to it i could uh, do a lot of uh, you know clickbait ad reads garner do other things too 
but i don't is because i want to keep the purity of the podcast intact i want to keep uh, the messaging intact and uh, and i truly thank each and every one of you who has become a member of the podcast who keeps on supporting this podcast who keeps supporting heterodoxy because heterodox thinking gets you nothing but galia more often than not heterodox thinking is very hard heterodox thinking makes you go to places where nobody wants to talk about so i appreciate all the support and i hope you guys keep on supporting me in this uh, venture that i have started in this journey that i have started and i will see you guys next time next week with another new guest or maybe it will be another monologue i don't know take care Bye bye